second speaker, uh, who is uh, Marius Parashivoli. He is from Concordia University and he will present a uh, uh, contribution entitled CSP based energy output estimation of roof mounted wind turbines in a urban environment. Yes. Can, you, can you hear me without the microphone? I guess I have a loud voice. So. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm from Concordia University and uh, people are saying the weather here is not so great, I'll just tell you. It's minus eight in Montreal today, so uh, minus what? Eight Celsius. So it's not so bad. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, give this talk. So it's work of my uh, student and collaborator, uh, and so I'll just go directly to the talk. So what we're going to look is how to place wind turbine in an urban environment. I'm going to show you the tool we've used. So this is a picture of a region of Montreal. This is a suburb. So we're going to be looking at those two regions. First, I want to show you some results we got with simulation of just one turbine on a building. Then I'll uh, show you how we calculate for this environment and then show you some of the results we got. Okay. Um, so, uh, just motivation. M most of the wind turbine we're, gonna, we're looking at are small wind turbine. Uh, we're looking at vertical axis wind turbine in this case. The CP is typically small. So, to make it viable, to make it at least commercial, we have to increase the CP to at least 0.4. And we're going to show you that by placing them on the building, especially the ones we start uh, with, have exceed the CP of 0.4. Okay, so our first results I'm going to show you just to flow around this uh, building, a square building. Here, just showing how at the last is 6 meters per second. And we're going to place the turbine on top here at the corner facing the wind. Um, the idea is that we want to take advantage of the acceleration, so we all know that. So we're going to look at different positions here and further back of a vertical axis turbine. And I'm going to go to that result here. So this is a turbine we're considering, a three blade vertical axis, it's a small turbine, two meters height and one meter in uh, radius. So this turbine, so we simulate this uh, at this location at different point one, point position two, and position three. This is in the accelerated area I showed you before. So we're simulating the full turbine. We're simulating uh, with 20,000 or 20, 28 million elements of the full turbine. Our mesh is okay. Our mesh is quite fine, the turbine is here, we go in and simulate the blade very accurately and that's why we need a lot of elements, we also simulate the building and have a boundary layer on the building. Okay. So we validated this turbine just by itself, we experimental data, we get the, the very, very close results and in this, what I'm showing you here is just the uh, results of the turbine on the building. <coughs> So, the three positions here, we have the different CPs, okay, uh, and I think a graphic, I'm going to show you graphically, um, jumping over this quite fast. So, this is the experimental data of the turbine itself in a free stream, okay. We have the same behavior, we simulate this with new R numerics. Now, for the different positions, one and two, those are the position in front of the building at the edge, and we have an increase in CP up here uh, with those two lines. So position two, which is the higher up, gives us a better CP. We do reach the point four. We still have to continue those simulations, uh, but each of those simulations takes about a month. So uh, we've done a lot here. We are going to continue doing a few, but uh, these, these take a long time. It, it does show that at the three positions, in, a, in all the cases, you do reach more than the uh, free stream. So the building, we know, is going to accelerate the flow, you have a higher flow. So if you place those, uh, at least in the in outside the recirculation area, you're going to get a better uh, energy production. The CP here is calculated with the stream, with the velocity, the upstream velocity far from the building. So. Uh, so it just shows that you have more power at those three locations. Now you see the TSR 
changes depending on the location. So if you're further back on, you have a uh, TSR, high peak TSR that is uh, smaller. If you're at the edge of the building, you have a TSR that is higher. So to, uh, to get that uh, higher production, you have to uh, turn faster. Yeah. So this is our results for, for that turbine. As I said, the simulations are very long. We're simulating the entire turbine. We, see, we have to simulate 20 or 30 cycles because before that, your, your, uh, your flow is not periodically, you don't get a periodical behavior. So all that simulation is very long. Then you have to simulate all the different uh, uh, TSRs. So each TSR is a new simulation. So uh, a lot of computation there. Now, we want to use this knowledge, but we want to also look at very complex urban environment. Because those turbines will not be in a building uh, just by themselves. They'll be in an urban environment. So here we're going to look at two complex uh, urban environments. So this is mainly the, the talk and the paper is, is mainly about this uh, work. But I just wanted to show you before what we've done with one turbine. So, we're going to look at uh, uh, urban environment, one is, is more dense than the other. We're going to try to find a, a uh, faster tool to, to estimate the power. We're also going to look at using uh, the environmental data, the wind direction from all at a specific location. And then estimate our, our energy. So this is the two environment in Montreal. I removed the snow, but... <laughs> So this is from Google uh, Map, and you'll see here, this, this one, which is a part of downtown of Montreal, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at a building that is not even here. It has been built since, and there's other buildings uh, uh, that are in the uh, process of being built. So the tool itself has the potential also to look at evaluating uh, uh, an environment that is not that has buildings that are going to be built in a few years. Okay. Uh, so, and this is a suburb area, it's like a typical suburb of a big city where you have businesses and a lot of parking and, and so on. Uh, so uh, very low density. Yeah, so what we do is we model these two areas, obviously, and then uh, we have to uh, model a big region around the area of interest. And the idea here, we're going to look at eight different wind directions because we, we separate this, the wind direction, separate the wind direction, we could take 12 or 16. Eight is a smaller number, so less simulation, but gives us the, the main north, south, east, west, uh, and so on. Okay? And then we have atmospheric boundary layer that comes in with the roughness, and then we have uh, the flow in the area of interest. So in the two areas we looked at, here you see the mesh is quite small, right? even though we have a lot of buildings, uh, than when we did the, the, the turbine by itself. We know most of our elements, if we simulate the wind turbine, it's in the boundary layer of the turbine. So if we're just looking at the flow around those buildings, we don't obviously calculate the boundary layer on the building, we get a, a general sense and a lot less elements. So. Uh, uh, faster computation. In the um, so LBD is for low building density and HBD is for high building density. We have three million elements and eight million elements in this case. So what do we do? Uh, so this is one of the building in the lower density area, and we're going to extract values of the wind in this case at four location. Uh, at the four corners. Okay, we're going to place the, the turbine here. So uh, we just at this point, which is three meters high. Remember, our turbine is at our turbine is two meters um, uh, height, and it's placed at one meter. So this is uh, basically uh, the uh, center of the turbine, and we're going to evaluate first with the same methodology. Look at the four points. Calculate energy production if we had a turbine at those four, four points based on the velocity and on the statistical data. Um, uh, and so, on. so that was for the, the low density. And here's the high density. So all those buildings in the picture I showed you didn't exist. Now they, they are exist. 
the building that uh, we're looking at is one of the high buildings. Um, if I go back, so this building is relatively small. Um, it's it's uh, it's about one third of the size of oh, of the size of this building in the downtown area. Okay. And here again, we take four points, and we're going to look. And this is the middle, middle of our computation, and we're going to look at extracting the value, the velocity of the value at four points of those points. Okay. This is the wind map in winter. I'm going to just show you results in winter. Uh, so four months in winter. This is uh, the different winds that uh, are in the measured at the airport, and we have the main wind in winter coming from the west and then uh, southwest and so on. So we're going to simulate these eight directions. Then we're going to scale it. So R, we have a reference velocity. Okay? A typical thing you do for uh, flow in urban areas. So you use a reference velocity. Uh, and then we want to calculate the actual velocity on the building. So based on reference velocities of the eight wind direction, we calculate the velocity of the building and then statistically use this to calculate how much of the time it is at that wind velocity and then from that we can calculate the energy at the power and then the energy. Okay. So we did that, so this is the low building density. First I'm going to just show you the values of the points, maybe not in detail but just get a sense. And this is the high building density. Remember, this is three times bigger than this. This is in a low building area, it's a high building area. The velocity, same methodology, the velocities are much higher. Okay. So the fact that it's less building around, even though this building is much higher, okay, so we should have much higher velocity, that's, that's what we typically expect on higher buildings, but because it's placed with a lot of buildings around, even though this is one of the larger ones, it still affects. So the velocities here in the low building areas are much higher uh, than, than, um, than this. So that's the first conclusion. Okay, we're going to go back to that. Now, looking just at this part, so low, low building uh, area. Um, so these, this is uh, the different control points. Okay? And we have, at each different point, a different energy production for the four months in winter. For the, five, for the full year, multiply by four, and you get a reasonable idea that you can do this uh, throughout the year, but we just did it in one. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, you see point number four much higher, okay, and the difference between the uh, two and four is significant. Uh, I want to go back to the, the points here. One, two, three, four, it comes from the west, obviously this has better velocities. This is our main uh, velocity uh, from the wind and point two in the back, uh, which is, uh, has low velocity. So, just by this, we can identify for a given area where is, uh, where is the best place to put this, uh, uh, to put the turbines. If we only want to put one turbine or two, we can pick the best two points. And we definitely see here, uh, as expected, that the point four gives us the best uh, power output and it is about double than here, but uh, at least uh, much more. Even if this one is in that there, we don't have the flux accelerating from the building that this point would, would give us. Okay. The, uh, oh, yeah. And the other... Uh, oh, am I going to lose my two minutes? Oh, I'm going that way. So, and, and the other uh, conclusion there was Okay, going back to, to, to the energy production on the total building, but in the downtown, very low energy production. Okay. The, the, other, the, the, the other building, we tried to look at it, we saw that at least from uh, the, the back, there are wakes of the other building, so definitely you're in the wake of other building. In the front, from the west, we shouldn't have that much weight, but the interaction with other building is significant. And the production, where we expected this to be a lot higher, is significantly lower, significantly 
we're talking about the same turbine here. We're talking about uh, same methodology. We're talking about uh, uh, small, same thing. This point uh, four here compared to the best here is three times better, and and uh, that was a surprise for us in, in that case. So this thing, this approach not only gives you the possibility for one building to find the best location, but also compare different location. And once you've done your simulation for the eight wind direction, you can you can do this on, on, on all the buildings if you want to. Uh, calculating the energy is not is not very cumbersome, it's not the time consuming. The simulation, the eight simulations are what uh, cost you the most. So for this small turbine, in the best location, the low density we can we can produce 2,500 kilowatts. It's a small turbine. It's a two two uh, meter high turbine. This is a reasonable production for a two meter high uh, vertical axis turbine. And this is the hourly estimated production. Our surprise was that in the high density, high building density, that we did not get the energy production we're expecting, especially that the building is. is Location uh, the building is uh, is high, but because of its location, it really had effects on the building. And this is something that, uh, if we're looking at urban environment, this is the main the main sort of thing that we often neglect to look at. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. So please, are there any questions or comments to this interesting presentation? Please. I would like The length was very, very low for your simulation, 0.03 for flat terrain. Ah, that's before, uh, yeah, because it, it, it's uh, the, the Z value. Uh, we can, we, you, you have different methodology. This is, uh, so ideally you would have another region just before where you would change that Z value and then get to the building. But we, our regions of building was quite large enough compared to the one we're investigating. So, so we expect that the, the, the whole region, the, the, the airflow near that main building is not that much affected by that. But we should, we should see the sensitivity to that value, yes. But it's a big influence. It's a big influence, but if, if, if you're looking at comparison the four points, the same max is used for all the four points. The same max is used for the entire methodology. So that's why I put in the title an estimate. It's not we're not looking at 100% accuracy. We have a lot of other uh, uh, inaccuracy in, in the models. But using the same approach, same methodology for all the different points, we are comparing points between themselves. So what's more important is to know the location than to get the real estimate from the uh, energy itself. The second question is the result also depends on the roundness of the building. On the what? On the roundness of the building. Roundness? Yes. Yes, yeah, but these are, these are actual buildings. So we don't, we model them, we, we, we approximate uh, a few things, we don't model all the details, but we model uh, so they are relatively uh, well modeled. They are square in, the, in many of the cases. In, in, as you saw in some of, we did try to have the. So one of the building had the triangular shape before. So we did model that, but we tried to be very uh, close to what the uh, the building uh, geometries are. So we didn't really study. I mean, when you put them in actual buildings, they can't change the building anymore. Now, if you're, if you're uh, designing a building to hold it, well, then you should do that, definitely. So the roundness uh, is, is definitely a big effect, yeah, sure. And you can optimize the building to, to get that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've seen another question on there, okay. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about the methodology, because uh, the methodology you have used and this typology of mesh only allows you to make consideration on the mean, the mean. Of you. While uh, recent research shows that actually in a turbulent environment, this particular type of wind turbines can get uh, even more uh, energy. Have you considered that? How, how do you think this will so, affect? That, that's, 
So we have other works where we're looking at uh, unsteady and LES simulations. All our simulations are unsteady, but we're looking at more of LES and seeing how that will affect one turbine itself. Uh, so the, the drawback there is the computational time. You can't really, so, so yes, you can get more accuracy, but if you want a tool to just investigate something more for uh, consultants or industrial, you can't, you have to, to drop a little of the accuracy in, in an advantage to the speed. So here, this type of simulation, identifying uh, an area of that, of that size, you can do that with this, within, with those computations within a week of computation. So this is very reasonable to start looking at different complex terrains. Uh, if we're looking at, at even adding more in terms of unsteadiness, turbulence, and all that, then, uh, but we, we're, we're continuing this work, and, and we would like to maybe compare on, on very simple uh, results with, with what we're doing next is, is, an, is an, a turbulent boundary layer with a model for the turbine to, to also account for the turbulent flow, but then uh, save time on the turbine. So that's our next uh, project. Okay, thank you. Maybe a uh, very quick one, Andreu, please. Uh, hello, Andreu from the University of, of Florence. Um, I would like to ask you about the graph of the CP from the turbines. So I don't have the... the uh, so so the, the, on, on the building or the, 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 uh, the, 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 the turbine the, itself? The one of the three locations. Okay. Because there was the location which was uh, further back, the wall. yeah. So it was further back outside the recirculation region, the number mm -hmm. of position three. So that one, the peak was at the TSR around three. And so it was at lower TSR? Yes, lower and TSR. But how, I mean, I would like to understand why is the difference. So you see, the, 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 the CP we calculate, we calculate with the upcoming reference speed. So it's, it's the speed, so it's not the actual speed that is measured at location. We use the reference speed so that we compare all of them. Okay. okay. So the, the ref so the acceleration locally you'll have different speeds. If you were to consider the local speed, then then they would more fit together. Now because so it, it's which speed should you consider? which one we believe that the, the one far from the building is more of a reference speed because if you were to place that turbine by itself without a building this is the speed it will see okay thank you okay thanks again to the speaker